Hello students, uh, so in the previous class we started with undamped forced oscillation, before that we did undamped and damped free oscillations that means they were free from any external forces. Uh, in the previous class uh, we started with undamped forced oscillation, we derived uh, a particular case where we uh, looked into the part where uh, omega 0 is not equals to the uh, frequency uh, of the oscillation and then we also worked out one example right. So, today we um, will uh, derive the second part of it uh, which is uh, when omega 0 is equals to the frequency and uh, how does the solution will look like and then we will move on to the damped forced oscillation right. If time permits then we will look into one more example as well ok. So, uh, we derived up to this part. So, we did uh, case 1, um, where is that uh, here. So, case 1, case 1 was uh, when omega 0 is not equals to omega. So, we wrote down our solution y t as a c 1 um, cos of omega t plus c 2. Uh, so, c 2, uh, no this was com cos of omega 0 t and C2 uh, sin of omega 0 t, then uh, we had F0 by m, uh, what was it? Omega 0 whole square minus of omega square and this one was cos of omega t. So, this is the solution when uh, omega 0 is not equals to omega. Okay. Now, let us go to the case when omega 0 is equals to omega. As I was saying that uh, the way to find out this particular integral is very standard, you can find in any textbook for uh, second order or higher order um, linear differential equation, ordinary of course, uh, with non-homogeneous type, that uh, non-homogeneous right hand side. So, then in that case you need to find out the uh, particular integral. And uh, if uh, d square, uh, if omega 0 is not equals to omega, then in that case you can put d square equals to minus of uh, uh, a square or minus of omega square and if it is equal then basically uh, we do that uh, d plus a and uh, we check whether d plus a uh, will become 0 or not and from there we calculate the particular integral right. So, we instead of putting uh, d square equals to minus of a square uh, we do d plus a and then we will do the further calculation to calculate the particular integral. If I do that then it will consume a lot of time. So, I will write down the answer directly, but you can refer the calculation in our next chapter. From the next chapter you can learn how to calculate this particular integral. Right. So, complementary function part is same. So, y t equals to y c is same. It is just that the particular integral, the particular integral will change a little bit and it will become y p t that it will be 1 by uh, f d of um, we will have f 0 by m into cos of omega t. f 0 by m is not causing any trouble. So, it will just simply come outside and then we will have 1 by f d uh, cos of omega t and uh, f t is basically f 0. This is basically our d square um, sorry there is no d 0 d, d square plus omega 0 whole square into cos of omega t. Since uh, they are equal when we substitute d square equals to minus of a square it will create a uh, problem. So, therefore, uh, we put d instead of d we put uh, d plus a or d minus a and from there we calculate the particular integral. If we do that then finally, we will obtain f 0 by m and uh, this will be t uh, 1 by 2 uh, t sin of uh, omega 0 t. So, all together it will become 1 by 2 m f 0 t sin of omega 0 t. You can keep it just for the time being and uh, the, the method from here to here we will learn in the coming classes. Right. So, from here we can write down the complete solution. The uh, required solution or the required complete solution. The required solution is given by y t is equals to y um, c which is basically c 1 into cos of omega 0 t plus c 2 into sin of omega 0 into t 
plus 1 by 2 m uh, f 0 t sin of omega 0 t. Right. So, this is the required uh, complete solution of the given um, second order ordinary differential equation with non homogeneous right hand side which actually represents your forced damped oscillation when uh, your omega 0 which is basically the, this k by m um, is actually equal to the um, frequency. So, a lot of uh, terminologies that, has go, that, that, that is going on right and uh, of course, we can consider an example of uh, previous type where instead of taking omega equals to um, 10, 11 by 10, we can take omega equals to um, simply um, same. That means, uh, if I go back to the previous example from the last class, uh, we can have um, uh, the same in a mass spring k is equals to 1, m is 1, f 0 is 1 and all those things. You can keep it here also. So, from previous example, from previous example, let us take k is equals to 1, m is equals to 1, omega 0 equals to omega equals to 1 and f 0 as 1. Right. So, then the equation of motion will be y double dash plus y is equals to cos of t right and uh, y at 0 is equals to 0 and y dash at 0 is equals to 0 right. So, same as whatever we had in the example 1 we will keep that same it is just that we are using omega 0 equals to omega. So, then the solution will be given by from case 2. So, from case 2 uh, the required solution the required solution y t becomes or is given by uh, becomes uh, y t is equals to this is together becomes uh, y t is equals to c 1 cos of omega 0 t which is 1. So, cos of t plus c 2 uh, sin of t uh, plus f 0 by 2 m omega 0 that is 1 m is also 1. So, this is simply f 0 by 2 uh, t into sin of t because omega 0 is also 1. So, this is the required solution. Now, we can determine c 1 and c 2 using f at 0 equals to 0 or y at 0 sorry uh, y at 0. Uh, we can determine c 1 and c 2 by y at 0 equals to 0 and y dash at 0 equals to 0 and somewhat it will look similar to whatever constant we had in the previous example right. And uh, of course, here we can also see that uh, the, the, the function is basically mixture of cos and sin right. So, it will be an oscillating type uh, uh, graph for y t. Okay. Now, the very last topic in this regard is the damped forced oscillation, damped forced oscillations oscillations ok. So, analogously <coughs> when we had undamped forced oscillation we are uh, considering the damping coefficient om gamma as 0. Now, here your gamma will also be present k will be present not only that the right hand side will also be there. So, with uh, the similar anal analogy with the similar analogy similar analogy we have uh, y double dash then uh, 2 zeta uh, omega 0 y dash plus omega 0 whole square into y right uh, f 0 by m cos of omega t and uh, y at 0 is equals to y 0 and y dash at 0 equals to y 1 0. Let us call it as equation number 1, 2, 3 where, where 
our zeta is um, gamma by s 2 square root of k m and uh, omega 0 is simply k by m right and uh, what else yeah that is pretty much it. So, these are the two uh, parameters that we have introduced I am just going to write down their definition uh, if, if I had in the previous class. So, this is the damping ratio right. So, this is called as damping ratio damping ratio and I think it is gamma by 2 square root of km right and this is positive all the time uh, damping ratio and uh, omega 0 is as usual the, uh, uh, the this uh, k ratio k by m and uh, finally our equation reduces to this. So, this is somewhat looking similar to what we had for damped free oscillation it is just that here our right hand side is uh, non zero correct. So, um, this is damping ratio. So, where uh, we have this f 0 uh, cos of omega t cos of omega t is a periodic driving force is a periodic periodic uh, driving force periodic driving force. So, in this physical setting in this physical setting in this physical setting uh, the complementary function the complementary function um, with uh, fully determined coefficient fully determined coefficients coefficients uh, or constants whatever fully determined coefficients or constants uh, or or constants is called so there is a terminology is called transient solution transient solution and uh, the particular solution and the particular solution is called the steady state solution this has nothing to do with the derivation that we are doing it is just that it is nice to know these definitions that is that is all ok. And uh, and uh, um, the form uh, the form of the transient uh, component component uh, depends on the type of the damping on the type of damping obviously because now it involves gamma gamma actually tells us the uh, damping is it is actually the damping coefficient. So, since uh, now the solution involves gamma. So, basically the transient solution actually uh, depends on the type of damping we have and at the same time uh, we can write at the same time uh, what do we have uh, at the same time. the right hand side the right hand side uh, of the equation of the equation indicates that the forced response response 
is a linear combination is a linear combination of cos of omega t then and sin of omega t which can be which uh, can be brought to the form of or can be brought to the form of a cos of omega t minus phi right so somewhat similar to what we had uh, uh, in the uh, damped free oscillation so in the damped free oscillation also we introduce these uh, parameters uh, these parameter gamma and uh, there we uh, try to write the solution as uh, a sin omega t uh, sorry a cos omega t minus phi um, because we can determine these uh, uh, constants and then it can be put together as this uh, cos a minus b or cos a plus b that formula right and uh, yeah so this is um, what we uh, wanted to uh, derive or wanted to say because uh, we can derive the complementary function just like the way we did for the um, uh, damped free oscillation and we can also determine the particular integral now based on which we can write down the solution right um, we can uh, work out one example uh, for damped free or uh, damped forced oscillation so let us consider one example so the position y t the position y t uh, at a time t at time t positive uh, of a unit mass of a unit mass uh, in a system in a system with gamma equals to 0 with gamma equals to uh, gamma equals to 5 if it is 0 then it will become uh, uh, undamped so with gamma is equals to 5 and k is equals to 4 and k is equals to 4 uh, which starts moving from the point uh, which starts moving uh, which starts uh, moving from the point uh, 13 with initial velocity of minus 95 and uh, is uh, acted uh, upon by a periodic uh, external force external force of amplitude of amplitude 34 and frequency 1. and frequency 1 is a solution of the initial value problem uh, y double dash plus 5 y dash plus 4 y is equals to. Um, so, we have uh, k as 4 so that is 4 y we have gamma as 5 and then on the right hand side our uh, f 0 so that is uh, uh, given by uh, 34 cos of t and uh, y at 0 is equals to 13 and y dash at 0 is equals to minus of 95. So, let us call it as equation 1, 2 and 3. 
a very very fairly simple uh, second order ordinary differential equation if you know how to solve the right hand side because for the left hand side it is very easy to write down the complementary function all right. Uh, so, the complementary function can be determined as um, so the complementary function uh, of 1 the complementary function of 1 can be determined determined from y double dash plus 5 y plus 4 y equals to 0. So, that means, we can form the auxiliary equation i e uh, the auxiliary equation auxiliary equation will be m square plus 5 m plus 4 equals to 0. So, from here it will imply m plus 4 times m plus 1 equals to 0. So, we will get m is equals to minus of 1 minus of 4 and uh, complementary function can be determined from this that is the auxiliary equation is this and uh, this uh, auxiliary equation is this and therefore, and uh, therefore, y c t that means, the com complementary function um, this will be um, what is it then c 1 times e to the power minus of t plus c 2 times e to the power minus of 4 t. So, at least uh, complementary function is known. Now, particular integral not that difficult we can determine like this. Next we determine we can write next we shall determine the particular integral we shall determine the particular integral as uh, y p t which is basically 1 by d square plus 5 d plus 4 right. I hope so yeah and then this is uh, 34 uh, cos of t all right. So, 34 obviously will come on this side and this will become 1 by. Uh, so, we will substitute d square equals to minus of uh, a square. So, that will become uh, 5. So, th this will become minus 1 and that is 5 d plus 3 into cos t and uh, then you can take uh, 3 by 5 out and uh, from there we can uh, uh, try to. Uh, so, from here we can basically um, multiply the numerator and denominator by um, d minus 3 by 5 right and then we can substitute. Um, so, it is just a simple calculation. So, we can multi we can take the 3 by 5 out. So, if we take the 3 by 5 out then it will become uh, d plus. Uh, uh, so, we are taking no sorry we will take 5 by 3 out. So, we are taking 5 by 3 out and this will become d plus um, d plus. Uh, so, we are taking uh, sorry the, we are taking 5 out if we take 5 out then this will become d plus 3 by 5 right. So, not 5 by 3 or 3 by 5 we are taking d by. Uh, so, let us erase all this. So, we are simply taking 5 out right. So, we are taking 5 out and uh, here we have cos of t and then we multiply both numerator and denominator by uh, d minus 3 by 5. So, this will become d minus 3 by 5 here it will become d square minus uh, 9 by 25 I am little sloppy in calculations. So, you have to just double check my calculation. So, now here you can substitute d square equals to minus of a square again and uh, then it will become minus 1 and uh, 34 by 5 into d minus 3 by 5 this will become minus 1 minus 9 by 25 and then cos of t then this cos will be charged here then minus 3 by 5 and so on. So, if you do all this calculation something will also cancel out uh, this will come out as a very nice expression 3 cos t I believe plus 5 sin t something like this will come out right 
because d of cos t, so that means you are doing d dt of cos t. Um, so, whatever negative sign it will bear and then you will have minus 3 by 5 uh, cos t. So, I can see one 5 is getting cancelled, here 34 will get cancelled. So, it will come out to be a very nice expression here. So, therefore, the required uh, or not required because uh, required we will use when we determine C 1 and C 2. So, therefore, uh, that is ok. So, we can write the required solution uh, is given by does not matter we can still determine given by y t equals to y c t plus y p t. So, y c t is uh, c 1 e to the power minus of t plus c 2 e to the power minus of 4 t plus 3 cos t plus 5 sin t right. Now, from here we will use the uh, initial condition y at 0 and y dash at 0 uh, whatever value we have mentioned here let us go back to the previous slide. So, these two values we can use to determine C 1 and C 2 right. So, by using initial conditions by using initial conditions conditions we can determine we can determine C 1 and C 2 C 1 and C 2 and this gives this gives our y t as uh, so C 1 will come out to be th uh, t uh, minus of 20. So, I will write the positive one first. So, e to the power minus 30 into e to the power minus of 40 minus of 20 into e to the power minus of t plus 3 cos t plus 5 sin t. You can just double check whatever I have written here. Maybe these numbers if they are incorrect you can try to rectify it, but the idea is same. You put t is equals to 0 and use the information y 0 equals to whatever value is given. Then you again do the derivative and then you put t equals to 0 and use the value of y dash 0. From there we can calculate and this will be the required solution. And uh, the transient solution then is, so the transient, the transient solution 30 e to the power minus of 4 t and 20 e to the power minus of t uh, decays rapidly, decays rapidly. Obviously, when t tends to infinity they both go to 0, but uh, it goes really rapidly as t increases and the forced response the forced response 3 cos t plus 5 sin t plus 5 sin t has as expected the oscillatory behavior, the oscillatory behavior, behavior. Okay. Uh, I am not sure if it is O U R or simply O R. So, that you can verify. Uh, oscillatory behavior and um, quickly becomes dominant and quickly becomes dominant dominant that means remain uh, remainder of the motion as t progresses it will remain periodic in that or oscillatory in that sense so performing the ne uh, necessary computation you can determine the uh, the amp this uh, amplitude and the phase uh, so the amplitude a will be given by square root of uh, 3 square plus 5 square so that will be simply square root of 34 and the phase that means uh, this uh, uh, phi can be given by tan inverse of uh, phi by 3, right. Okay. So, this is approximately equal to 1.03, this you can calculate from some calculator. So, therefore, hence the forced response can be approximated or can be approximated as approximated as uh, a that means the square root of 34 cos of uh, omega t. Uh, so, omega uh, uh, that is 1. So, t minus 
uh, 1.03. So, if we plot the solution, so the solution will look like something like this. So, this is T, and then uh, this is uh, y t right and uh, here we have 5 then we have 10 so it will start somewhere here then it will rapidly drop then this is 2 uh, and then it will start oscillating and so on so it dropped immediately and then it became oscillatory so here we have uh, uh, 0 then somewhere we have 2 uh, so it dropped then somewhere we have I don't know, 2, then we have 4, um, so I mean it may not be equidistant, okay, so don't, don't worry about it, I mean uh, I'm not very good at drawing, but uh, you got the message, right, uh, 12, 14 and so on. So, um, in this case, in case of forced, uh, damped forced oscillation, we see that the, uh, this um, transient solution for this particular example, it decays immediately and the, the forced response is actually the one which is dominant. So, that is the one which is giving us this nice oscillatory behavior of this uh, mass spring, right. So, we have covered uh, actually undamped forced oscillation, there also we obtain the solution and we considered one example. In case of damped forced oscillation, we also obtained the solution and we showed, uh, uh, we, we showed one example as well. So, this was, this is what uh, or these are the topics that I wanted to talk about in this chapter. So, uh, the basically we, uh, we have completed this one and in the next class, we will start with uh, higher order uh, differential equations, right. Uh, so, that means second order or third order and there we will learn uh, methods to um, uh, solve basically this FD operator and all that we will learn more in detail, alright. So, thank you for your attention and I will see you in the next class. Hello students, so up until previous class we looked into um, undamped uh, and damped free oscillations that means uh, there was any um, there was not any force term that was present in the equation right. So, uh, in this class and probably in the next class we will look into um, equation of motions uh, which uh, actually involves uh, the presence of uh, force term. Right, and we will see how to write down the solution. Uh, basically, they will also be a second order ordinary differential equations, but uh, non homogeneous type. That means uh, there will be a force term on the right hand side. And we will see um, how does the equation of motion looks like and uh, what can we say about the solution. I mean, uh, the analysis uh, or the um, calculation that we did for uh, free oscillations, it will be somewhat similar. Um, and uh, we, we will uh, compare right uh, for uh, free as well as the forced uh, oscillations. So, let us uh, do that. Okay. So, first of all for um, um, undamped and damped free oscillations, uh, we, we had something like this right. So, um, if I give you the recap or uh, um, how to say um, uh, if we recall uh, the equation for uh, a damped and undamped. So, for the damped first of all, uh, the equation of motion was something like this. Uh, it was uh, m into y double dot plus uh, gamma into y, da, y dot or y dash uh, into k y is equals to 0. Uh, this was the, this was basically damped, uh, but uh, free oscillation, right? Damped, uh, but free oscillation. That means, there is no force term. So, on the right hand side, we have 0 and uh, then we can complement it with some initial conditions. So, y at 0 was 0 and then y dash at 0 was uh, y 1 0, right. So, th this equation together with this equation, it is actually a damped free oscillation and uh, what we did, uh, we defined uh, a parameter zeta, uh, which was given by gamma by uh, 2 square root of m k, which is definitely positive and uh, we sort of uh, looked into the properties of this zeta that uh, if zeta is greater than 1, then what will happen? If zeta is greater than 1, then what will happen or how the solution will look like and um, uh, we also wrote down if you recall the solution as uh, y t equals to um, y 0 r 2 minus y 1 0 divided by r 2 minus r 1 uh, e to the power r 1 t plus 
y10 minus y0 r1 divided by r2 minus r1 into e to the power r2 t where r1 and r2 they were actually coming from uh, they, they are actually coming from solving the um, auxiliary equation right so from there we can relate it with the roots and all that so this derivation we have already seen uh, again uh, the second possibility was when zeta is equals to 1 then um, how the roots will look like uh, how the solution will look like so here in this case our r1 and r2 were simply minus of uh, um, uh, omega 0 which is less than uh, 0 and uh, from here we wrote down the solution as uh, yt is equals to um, y0 plus uh, y0 omega 0 plus uh, y10 into uh, t and uh, uh, whole multiplied by 2 to the power minus omega 0 t and um, uh, yes um, uh, this was for zeta equals to 1 the third case was when zeta is less than 1 here in this case I think uh, we wrote down the solution uh, because here we will get the complex roots and uh, we basically wrote down the solution uh, y t as um, if I remember correctly uh, e to the power minus of uh, zeta omega 0 t within bracket uh, something like uh, c 1 cos of omega 1 t plus c 2 cos of omega 2 t. I think all these terminologies have been explained in the previous class. So, from there you can find out what is omega 1, omega 2 and omega 0. But uh, the message here is that for damped free oscillations uh, depending upon uh, this this ratio that is gamma by 2 square root of m k will get three different types of solutions and we also wrote down um, uh, or uh, we also worked out three examples where we saw um, what uh, will happen to the solution depending upon this value of zeta right. So, that was uh, for damped free oscillation uh, similar analysis was done for undamped free oscillation. Now, um, in this class we will look into damped uh, forced oscillation uh, undamped forced oscillations and similarly damped forced oscillations and we will work out few examples just to um, understand the concept right. So, that was up until last class. Now, um, we want to look into forced mechanical oscillations, mechanical oscillations. So, there are two categories either it can be undamped and second one is it can be damped either one of them right. So, let us start with undamped uh, forced oscillation right. So, the governing equation is a similar uh, physics is, uh, is, is, is um, it's similar. So, here in this case we have the force term, but uh, the, uh, the, the physics behind is that we have some kind of uh, harmonic oscillator or something like a pendulum situation things like that right. So, the governing equation in this case the governing uh, equation of motion uh, in this case is will have m y double dot or y double dash sorry uh, into k y is equals to f 0 uh, cos of uh, omega t. Achha, um, we should remove this bracket otherwise you might think that f 0 is a function of cos of omega t which is not actually. So, this is just f 0 times cos of omega t here we can put a bracket ok. So, since we have undamped that means uh, the damping coefficient uh, where uh, gamma is 0. So, this part is taken as to be 0 right and uh, we have to uh, let us name it as equation number 1 and we have to supply this with uh, some initial uh, conditions. So, I am calling y 0 at 0 equals to y 0 and y dash 0 at 0 
uh, y dash at 0 equals to y 1 0. This is equation number 2, right, where gamma is equals to 0. So, gamma is equals to 0 and uh, f and omega uh, uh, f 0 and uh, omega are the constant uh, amplitude ampli amplitude and frequency frequency um, of an external driving force of an external driving force say so that means we are taking f is equals to f0 cos of omega t. So, our external force is given by some f0 which is basically the amplitude times cos of omega t. So, amplitude means uh, if you take mod of omega then basically it will become um, uh, f0, absolute value of f0 into cos of omega t and uh, this is always bounded by f0. So, it will not go beyond f0. So, that is the amplitude because cos is less than or equal to 1. So, the value will be always between minus f 0 to plus f 0. All right. Now, using the notation, using the notation uh, k m is equals to omega 0, we uh, derive the following. We derive the following following. That means, we will divide by m on both sides. So, it will become w uh, y double dash k by m into y <coughs> is equals to f 0 by m uh, cos of omega t. Right? So, from here, uh, this will become y double dash k m, we are denoting it by omega 0 whole square into y is equals to f 0 by m cos of omega t right f 0 by m cos of omega t. Okay. Now, uh, basically here uh, we can find out the solution. So, as we can see this is uh, a non-homogeneous step. So, if you had right hand side as 0, then it would have been a homogeneous uh, second order differential equation. We can find out the solution right away, but since we have right hand side as non-homogeneous, that means uh, we will find out the solution more like uh, the complementary function which is the solution of the reduced equation. Reduced in the sense you take the right hand side as 0 and then you solve it. So, whatever solution that we will get that that is the solution of the reduced equation and we call that solution as the complementary function right and the complete solution will be given by the sum of complementary function plus particular integral. So, that is what uh, we are going to do here. So, let us call this as equation number 3. So, the reduced equation, reduced equation is given by y double dash plus omega 0 whole square equals to 0 and uh, let us call it as equation number 4 and uh, therefore, the solution uh, or the complementary function, the complementary function y c uh, corresponding to corresponding to equation 3 is given by. So, basically um, this y double dash plus omega 0 whole square into y equals to 0. If you try to form the uh, auxiliary equation. So, it will look somewhat uh, m square plus omega 0 whole square equals to 0. So, from here we will get m equals to plus minus omega 0 i and therefore, the solution will be uh, c 1 cos omega 0 t plus c 2 uh, sin omega 0 t because the real part is 0. So, e to the power alpha t part will be gone because alpha is 0. So, that solution is actually called the complementary function for equation 3. right? So, we will write uh, the complementary function y c t equals to some c 1 
cos of omega 0 t plus some c 2 sin of omega 0 t, where c 1 and c 2 are arbitrary constants, right? arbitrary uh, constants. Okay. Uh, let us call this as equation number 5. Now, now uh, we have to find out the particular integral. So, the particular integral, uh, the uh, particular integral needs to be calculated. The particular integral, integral needs to be calculated calculated um, when we start uh, a differential equation of higher dimension right uh, that means when we are solving second order third order that will be our next chapter there i'll teach you some methods on how to calculate this particular integral but some of you might already be aware because uh, you may have studied second order third order or even fourth order or any differential equation on uh, you, uh, by, by using this method of a d operator right and then you can write 1 by um, f d uh, charged on this right hand side and then you calculate the particular integral. So, it is a similar thing that we will learn in, uh, in the next chapter, but uh, if you already know then you can implement here also. So, the particular integral needs to be calculated and uh, it actually uh, uh, and uh, the form uh, of a and the form of a particular integral p i uh, uh, or a correct or a convenient particular integral or a convenient or appropriate appropriate particular integral p i depends on depends on uh, depends on whether omega uh, coincides with omega 0 or not because we know if uh, uh, omega coincides with omega 0 then there is a way or formula to calculate the particular integral if it does not coincide then there is a way to calculate the particular integral. So, if it uh, does not coincide, so let us say that uh, case 1, uh, case 1 if omega is not equals to omega 0. So, then, uh, then uh, the particular integral, uh, then the particular integral will be given by then the particular integral integral will be given by so um, I will write this here so this can be visualized as uh, uh, f of d charged on f0 cos of omega t right this is how we obtain the particular integral. So, what is this f d? This f d is our um, d square plus uh, omega 0 whole square, right? Um, d square plus omega 0 uh, whole square. Now, uh, uh, if uh, d square plus omega 0 whole square, so what is that d? The d is basically um, d d t uh, and uh, it is denoted by capital D, right. I am pretty sure you are aware of these notations. So, here what will happen is um, we can substitute this as d square plus omega 0 whole square f 0 cos of omega t. And the working rule is that if uh, omega square is not equals to minus of omega 0 whole square, right. So, then in that case um, uh, we can substitute uh, d square equals to uh, 
uh, if, if it is not equal, then in that case we can substitute uh, d square equals to uh, d square equals to minus of omega square. Uh, so, here we can substitute d square equals to minus of omega square plus omega 0. So, if, uh, if it is not equal, then in that case uh, we can say that um, this is not becoming 0, right. So, we will have uh, f 0 cos of omega t. Did I write this correctly? Omega 0 uh, omega square is uh, if omega square is not equals to um, omega square is not equals to sorry no, no not negative sign sorry omega square is not equals to omega 0 square correct because if omega square is equals to omega 0 square then this factor will become 0 right and therefore it will become 1 by 0 so it will lead to an undefined quantity uh, so here uh, if omega is not equals to omega 0 square so we'll replace d square so we'll replace d square by minus of omega square and uh, this is nothing but your f0 cos of omega t divided by omega 0 square minus of omega square that is your particular integral right and uh, it is um, I mean if if, uh, if we see uh, basically uh, if your uh, uh, omega 0 square minus of omega square is not becoming 0 then in that case you just substitute d square equals to minus of a square and that will give you the required um, a means whatever argument you have in cos and that will be your required particular integral. If it is same, then there is a different technique, right. So, we will come to that case. So, therefore, we will get the particular integral, we have the uh, uh, complementary function. So, the required solution, the required uh, solution or complete solution uh, is uh, y t is equals to y c t. Uh, plus y p t that means I, th I think solution of equation number 3 I believe. So, here it will be c 1 cos of uh, omega 0 t if I am not wrong this was sin of omega 0 t and uh, plus particular integral that is f 0 cos of omega t divided by omega 0 whole square minus omega square right. So, this is the required solution. And uh, we still need to determine C1 and C2. So, now uh, let us call it as I lost equation count, uh, maybe let us call it as star. So, now we determine the constant C1 and C2. Now we determine uh, C1 and C2 using initial conditions IC. So, from there if you substitute uh, y at 0 equals to 0 and y dash 0 equals to 0 uh, sorry y at 0 equals to y 0 and uh, y dash 0 equals to y 1 0 right. So, if you substitute that then uh, we will get our c 1 uh, c 1 is equals to y 0 minus of f 0 by uh, m times um, omega 0 whole square. Uh, so, there was an m here also right. There was an m here f 0 by m f 0 by m f 0 by m. So, here I have a m also. Of course, it does not change much uh, omega 0 square minus of omega square and uh, if I calculate c 2 then c 2 will come out to be um, y 1 0 by omega 0 right. So, we got our c 1 y 0 minus f 0 m uh, y omega 0 square minus omega square and c 2 as y 1 0 omega 0. So, substituting these values back into the equation number star will get the required uh, solution of our um, uh, equation when omega is not equals to omega 0 right. Um, we can look into one uh, example. <coughs> so, the example goes like this for case 1 right for case 1. Um, case 1 uh, example for case 1 right. So, example number 1. So, consider in a mass spring in a mass spring with k is equals to 1, 
a unit mass starts oscillating from rest at uh, the origin and uh, is acted upon and uh, is acted upon by an external force by an an external force of amplitude 1. Of amplitude 1 and frequency and frequency 11 by 10. Then the position y t then the position of y t uh, of mass at time t positive is therefore the solution of the of the initial value problem y double dash plus uh, k is 1 right. So, we will have uh, y is equals to um, mass is also 1. So, okay. um, then uh, force external force with amplitude is 1 fine. So, we will have ultimately cos of omega is 11 by 10 t right. So, this is equation number um, 1 and uh, since it was at origin. So, y at 0 equals to 0 and uh, at rest of course. So, y dash at 0 equals to also 0. So, this is equation number 2. So, it is given that it starts from the origin at rest. So, y at 0 equals to 0 and then um, y dash at 0 equals to 0. So, this is the given system of uh, sorry um, given uh, equation of motion for the uh, mass spring of uh, basically unit mass. So, the here <coughs> then we can calculate our omega 0 which is given by 1 k by m. So, that is 1. Uh, we have omega equals to 11 by 10 that is given and our f 0 is also given to be 1 fine uh, y 0 at 0 then uh, y dash 0 equals to 0. So, from previous calculation previous calculation calculation we obtain y t that means the complete solution uh, y t equals to um, so using these values we can determine the constants as well and uh, we'll have uh, 100 by 21 uh, cos t minus 100 by 21 cos of 11 by 10 t minus 200 by 21 uh, sin of 1 by 20 t into sin of 21 by 20 t. So, the function basically the function uh, y represents represents an oscillation an oscillation whose amplitude whose amplitude um, is itself oscillatory is is itself oscillatory itself as it oscillatory and this is known as and uh, this is known 
known sorry known as amplitude modulation this phenomena basically although this definition has nothing to do with the derivation amplitude modulation and uh, if we plot then it would look somewhat like this i'm not very good with uh, drawing so this is t and uh, then uh, this is origin and then we have 5 then we have 10 and so on here we have minus 5 and here we have minus of 10 and so on so it will start like this and uh, something like this then it will also be right and uh, the, the, there will be an oscillation of this type right and then this then this then this then this then this uh, sorry it will touch here so like this so, so, as I said, I mean, it will oscillate uh, more of uh, um, of this type the, and so on and then like this. So, it will start from smaller oscillations from here, then touch uh, the upper and lower curves and then it will keep on. So, here you will have the maximum amplitude, then it will again oscillate further, here it will sort of merge and then again it will start oscillating like that. So, that kind of cusp it will follow, right. And uh, this particular example actually shows that the presence of forced oscillation, um, how it affects um, and of course, when the uh, when that uh, omega 0 is not equals to omega. So, here our omega 0 is 1 and omega is 11 by, uh, 10, 11 by 10. So, definitely they are not equal and therefore, our solution the y represents an oscillation whose amplitude it is self oscillatory and this is basically called as amplitude modulation. And if you plot the graph, uh, then it will sort of shows that how y t oscillates between uh, uh, certain uh, between this uh, uh, magnitude or amplitude, right? And um, yeah, so this is what we uh, wanted to derive uh, in today's class. So in next class, uh, we'll consider the case when omega is equals to omega zero, and then what will be the solution? And then we'll move to the very last topic that is actually forced uh, damped oscillation. So this is undamped. Uh, forced oscillation then next class will derive the uh, damped forced oscillation and uh, that will conclude this chapter. So, thank you and I will see you in the next class.